Paul got himself arrested a heap of times in his life. <laughs> and he's now just been arrested again. And he's gonna be in prison for years. He doesn't know it's gonna be years. He's gonna be in Caesarea in prison for two years. Then he's gonna be a prisoner on the way to Rome. Then he's gonna be a prisoner in Rome in another two years. He's like a prisoner for up to five years in one stretch. And it all begins kind of like in this Acts chapter 22, 23, 4 period. But it's interesting to me that this is the part of his life where he writes a lot of letters. So sometimes these things work out well. Let us read. After five days, the high priest Ananias came down with certain elders and an orator, one to Tullus. They informed the governor against Paul. When he was called, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by you we enjoy much peace, and that prosperity is coming to this nation by your foresight, we accept it in all ways and in all places, most excellent Felix, and with all thankfulness. But that I don't delay you, I entreat that you bear with us and hear a few words. We have found this man to be a plague, an instigator of insurrections among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and we arrested him. By examining him yourself, you may ascertain all of these things with which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the attack, affirming that these things were so. When the governor had beckoned to him to speak, Paul answered, because I know that you have been a judge of this nation for many years, I cheerfully make my defence, seeing that you can verify that it is not more than 12 days since I went up to worship at Jerusalem. In the temple, they didn't find me disputing with anyone or stirring up a crowd, either in synagogues or in the city, nor can they prove to you the things which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that after the way which they call a sect, so I serve the God of our fathers, believing all things which are according to the law and which are written in the prophets, having hope toward God, which these also themselves look for, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. In this I also practice always having a conscience void of offence toward God and men. Now after some years I came to bring gifts for the needy to my nation and offerings, amid with certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, not with a mob, nor with turmoil. They ought to have been here before you and to make accusation if they had anything against me, or else let these men themselves say what injustice they found in me when I stood before the council, unless it is for this one thing that I cried standing among them, concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged before you today. But Felix, having more exact knowledge concerning the way, deferred them, saying, When Lysias, the commanding officer, comes down, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion that Paul should be kept in custody and should have some privileges, and not to forbid any of his friends to serve him or to visit him. But after some days, Felix came with Drusilla, his wife, who was a Jewess, and sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Jesus Christ. As he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was terrified and answered, Go your way this time, and when it is convenient for me, I'll summon you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given to him by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore also he sent for him more often and talked with him. But when two years were fulfilled, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus, and desiring to gain favour with the Jews, Felix left Paul, in bonds. Paul got arrested in Jerusalem. Uh, in the last chapter, we there was a kind of a plot to kill him, so they took him to Caesarea for safety. So Caesarea is like on the coast. Jerusalem, of course, is the capital. Well, Jerusalem's not the capital. At this time, Caesarea is the capital, but Jerusalem's the most important city. Caesarea is where the governor is. Because it's on the coast, there's a harbour there, quick access to Rome, hop in the ship and off you go. <laughs> and um, so they take Paul to Caesarea and um, so to get him away from the Jews and away from Jerusalem to keep him safe. And he's locked up, which is just as much for his safety as it is to, to because he's a prisoner. 
So there he, you know, the Jews send their lawyer to Tullus and they accuse him of creating riots. And they even said he creates riots all over the world. Now, it's true that wherever Paul went, riots happened. <laughs> but Paul doesn't create the riots. Paul um, simply says things which are controversial because he's trying to teach people and explain. But then what happens is that people themselves start rioting. And, and um, we don't see a lot of riots in Western culture. Um, uh, mostly, people have learned to control their feelings <laughs> for the large part. Although sometimes online you see people say the most craziest things. It's, it's almost as though they think no one's listening when they say and post things online. But in ancient times, it seems like riots were much more common. And in some parts of the world, there still are riots happening. So Paul, everywhere he went, there were riots, but Paul doesn't try to instigate riots. He's just trying to share the good news. When Paul goes to visit Rome, he doesn't try to start a riot at all. It just starts, he's not even speaking. It just starts without him. And that's what Paul says. He says, I haven't done anything. If they have an accusation, let them come and bring it. He says, unless it's this one thing, so when he was first being on trial at the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem, he had noticed that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were present and they disagreed. So he had said this provo provocative statement, concerning the resurrection, I'm on trial. That caused a big stir. <laughs> so he kind of admits, he says, well, I, I haven't done anything unless you're, th you're referring to that one moment in the Sanhedrin. But that wasn't the moment that started it all, and that wasn't the moment that got him arrested. But Felix um, doesn't decides not to solve the case. He, he could literally have said, look, there's nothing to it, off you go. And interestingly, if he had done that, Paul would have been freed and probably killed immediately by the Jews. It's actually the fact that he's not freed and kept locked up that kept him safe. And also, that was a part of the process that ended up getting him to Rome. Um, I know there's a theological or kind of a church historian debate about where was Paul when he wrote his prison epistles. So there's a whole heap of letters that are called the prison epistles. And uh, where was Paul when he wrote them? You know, like Ephesians and Philippians and all of this. Was he in prison in Caesarea or was he in prison in Rome? Well, some people think it was right at this time that he starts writing these letters. In the end, it doesn't matter <laughs> because the point is, because of his being locked up, he wrote these letters. And um, But Felix wants to be bribed. And um, I can tell you some bribery stories. Bribery is a big thing in, in other parts of the world. It's not a thing in Australia, as far as I'm aware. I know that if you try to bribe someone, you'll be the one to get into big trouble. I've never tried. No one's ever tried to bribe me. Um, but I know that um, in other parts of the world, like India and the Middle East and other places, um, parts of Africa, a bribe makes the world go round. And um, Paul would have known this, and um, Felix is waiting for two years, leaves him in prison, and um, but uh, Paul isn't paying a bribe. It's not Paul's way to do so. Uh, history tells us... Um, that Felix um, was a governor until 58. I think it was 58. Just let me check that up very quickly. No, until 60. So it is 60 CE at this end of this chapter when Felix leaves and Festus becomes the next governor. So it's 60 CE. So it's been 30 years or maybe almost 30 years since Jesus has died at this point. And then they change. Um, they change governors. Now, there's one thing in this chapter I want to mention. Felix kept calling for Paul from time to time. Now, that part of it was because he wanted a bribe, but there's one point here where, where Paul is talking to him about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. That's verse 25. It said Felix was terrified and said, go away for this time, and when it's convenient, I'll call you again. The word of God convicts people. Um, the Holy Spirit convicts people of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Here it says that Paul spoke to him about righteousness, self-control, and judgment. So very similar things. When people are convicted by the Holy Spirit, they 
the Lord lets them decide whether to respond or not. So you may have been in church, you may have heard a sermon preached, or you may have been someone else and you felt this burning sense in your heart and you knew that the Lord was wanting you to do something. Now you may have responded to that and said, yes, Lord, or you may have resisted. Um, well, in this chapter, Felix resists. He's the governor of all Judea, but he resists. When Paul was converted on the road to Damascus, um, his eyes were blinded, and then Ananias comes and prays for him in Damascus and says to him that the, there was a word from the Lord that said, you must speak before governors. Well, now he has done just that. Father, I thank you for this chapter. Thank you for Paul, who spoke to governors, but also spoke to many regular people. I thank you he wrote letters, and we still have many of them today. I thank you for Paul, and I just ask that your grace work and flow through us in Jesus' name. Amen.